using Newton's equations of motion, aka SUVAT, to predict how things are going to move if they accelerate. It's one of those things that people can dread. But I guarantee that if you think logically, lay things out properly, and follow this simple process, then you will find it a lot easier. We know that if we have a car, that's traveling at a constant speed, then we can find out its speed by just dividing distance by time, or velocity. But of course that only calculates your average speed. What about if you have a car that starts off at a certain speed, but then ends up at a faster speed? Of course it's accelerated. We're going to say that it's sped up, so its velocity now, after a certain time and distance, is actually faster. And so we have to have something different from this, we need something else, and this is where SUVAC comes in. First things first, we need to distinguish between the car's speed here and the car's speed here. What we do is we call the initial speed at the beginning, when we're looking at the car U, and the final speed, or velocity, V. Now when we talk about distance, that's obviously a scalar, and because we're talking about uh, vectors, we have to name distance something else, and we call it displacement, S is displacement. And there's two more things we can know and measure, and these are all five things then that we can know SUVAT, hence the name. S is displacement. That's measured in meters. U is initial velocity. That's measured in meters per second. Now we can write it either as m slash s, or if you're in A-level, chances are that you're writing it like that. If anything's to the minus power, then that means we're dividing by it, exactly the same unit. V is final velocity. It's obviously m slash s, or m s to the minus one, two. A is acceleration. Finally, T is time. So you will have to remember all of these five things and what they actually mean. You have to relate the letter to what it means. So how do these five things relate to each other? Well, enter Newton and his equations of motion. Now, as there are five variables in any SUVAT scenario, S, U, V, A, and T, then we need four equations if we're going to relate all of them together. Here's the first one. V equals U plus A, T. So that's the final velocity is equals to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. That makes sense, doesn't it? It's just final speed equals initial speed plus the gain in speed. Next one is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Next one, S equals UT plus half AT squared. And finally, S equals U plus V divided by 2 times T. This one's nice and easy here. This makes sense in our heads because all we're saying is that the distance traveled is the average speed. So that's the average speed there. Uh, both the initial and final velocity added together divided by 2 times the time. This one's nice and easy. It's just effectively distance equals average speed times time. So which one do we use? Well, it depends on the question. So let's say that I have a car again. And it starts from standstill. And it accelerates... terrible car, to a speed of 10 meters per second. And I'm going to say that that took 
2.5 seconds. Now, we've been told that obviously V, our final velocity, is 10 meters per second, but it seems like we've only got two things here, doesn't it? Well, actually we do know a third because I told you that the car started at a standstill. Therefore, U is, you guessed it, zero meters per second. So be wary because you might often not get all of the numbers explicitly, but you will be told all of the information so you, that you can determine if you've got three variables, then you can find out a fourth. So actually we can find out both acceleration and displacement now. So what we do now is actually literally write down, and this is what you do every time in a SUVAT question, you write down exactly what you know and what you're trying to find out. So let's say that I want to find out for the time being A, I put a question mark next to that. What do I know? I know that U is zero, I know that V is 10, and I know that T is, is 2.5. So we look at what we're trying to find, look at what we have. I have U, V, A, and T, I'm trying to find out A. Therefore, what equation am I going to use? Well, I can't use any equation that has S in. And sure enough, this one has S in, this one has S in, this one has S in, so I'm obviously gonna be using this one. Can I use it straight away? Well, not really, because I need to make acceleration A the subject if I'm going to actually find it out. So all I do is rearrange it. So that's going to be V minus U equals AT. I'm doing it one step at a time. And then finally, plug that into your calculator, and we get 10 minus 0. That's just 10 divided by 2.5. That's going to give us an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. So that's the process. What we do is write down suvat wise what we know and what we're trying to find out. Choose the right equation from the four. You don't need to learn these. You're always going to get given these. And then rearrange if necessary and plug the numbers in. Easy. So let's just look at another couple of cases where suvat can be applied. Let's have a think about when things fall. So here we have a plane. And we have a skydiver that just is in the doorway and then he steps out uh, to fall under gravity. So it seems like I haven't given you a lot of information there, but actually there's a couple of things that I have told you already. I said that he just steps out, he doesn't jump, he doesn't push himself down. So we can actually say that his vertical initial velocity is zero meters per second. And also we know he's falling under gravity, so we know that acceleration is gonna be 9.8 meters per second squared because that's always the case. I'm going to say that it takes him 30 seconds to fall a certain distance. What about if I wanted to find out what that distance actually was? Well, I want the equation that doesn't have V in. And that turns out to be S equals UT plus half AT squared. Do I have to rearrange this? No, because I am actually trying to find out displacement here. But I know that UT will disappear because U is zero. So the whole thing disappears. So just S equals half AT squared. So that gives me S equals half times 9.8 times 30 squared. So he falls a distance of 4,410 meters. That's a long distance, isn't it? Well, obviously we're not taking into account effects of drag, air resistance, and the fact that he probably has a parachute that he's gonna open at some point. So just be careful. Even if you haven't been given three explicit numbers to put into your SUVAT list here, uh, you will be given all the information in a question. You just have to infer it. What about one more scenario when we actually throw things up? Obviously, I don't mean throwing up in the usual sense. So let's say that I have a ball in my hand. That's supposed to be my hand. And I'm going to throw it up with a speed of 6 meters per second. So I can say U is six meters per second. What about if I wanted to know how long it takes to get back down to my hand, which is gonna stay in the same position. Let's write out our list. So I said U is six meters per second. Do I know anything else? Well, yeah, because I know that acceleration uh, is falling under gravity, or at least it's accelerating under gravity, but we've gotta be careful here because I've just said that U is positive because I'm throwing it upwards. So we know that if gravity is accelerating this ball downwards, then we have to say that A is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. It doesn't matter which way round you put pluses or minuses, you just gotta make sure that they are consistent with your values. 
So I want to find out how long it takes to get back down to my hand, but I still need one more piece of information in order to find that out. Well, we can say that the velocity at the apex of its trajectory is going to be zero. So it's going from six meters per second and it's slowing down to zero meters per second at the top. For a split second, it stops and then it starts accelerating downwards or at least it carries on accelerating downwards, moving downwards then. So is there anything we can know about its final speed when it hits my hand? Well, yes, because if you throw something up or fire something up and it comes back down to the same spot, you can be sure that it's going to be the same speed, but just in the opposite direction. So its velocity is just opposite to what it was to begin with. So again, I'm going to use the equation V equals U plus AT, because that's the one without S in. Rearrange this. And that gives me uh, minus six, because that's my V. Minus six, because obviously U is just six. And that's starting to look a little bit weird, but don't worry, if your values are all right and your signs are all right, it'll fall out and uh, be okay in the end. Divided by minus 9.8, that gives me minus 12, divided by minus 9.8, obviously the minuses disappear and we end up with a speed of one uh, sorry a time of 1.22 seconds so if you're comfortable with dealing with suvat in one dimension one direction then you can move on to projectile motion that's using suvat in two dimensions the video is linked in the description bye for now